Rest assured you're not alone if you're struggling to come to terms with the current state of the world and its impact on your household. For many parents, balancing your own feelings of anxiety and helplessness with the need to put on a brave face for your kids can feel like an emotional seesaw. World-leading child and family psychology expert and founder of the internationally acclaimed Triple P Positive Parenting Program, Professor Matthew Sanders, is here to answer your questions about how to parent in a pandemic. He'll be drawing on more than 40 years worth of experience to help you in these trying times and give you real practical strategies. There has never been a more important time to look after yourself, both mentally and physically, so you can be the best parent you can be. So what are some of the common parent challenges right now? I really miss the other mothers at my mother's group. It has definitely impacted how supported I feel. How can I help my kids with a flood of frightening information coming in about the virus? It's all you hear about in the media and it's just always constantly there. It's really hard. We're all living on top of each other all day. I'm working from home now, but I can't get much done because the kids are pestering me all the time and I seem to end up shouting at them. What can I do? I've lost my two casual jobs, so I've got no money coming in. I really worry about my mum. She's 83 and she's living by herself. How can I stop my children from constantly fighting when we are living on top of one another? Well, there are certainly lots of unique challenges for families right now. And I think most people are realising that there is no simple playbook for being a parent during a pandemic. We're constantly needing to ask ourselves what needs to remain the same and what do we need to adjust so both we ourselves as parents and our children can better handle the immediate challenges we confront. In a lot of ways, we've got to just realise that there are some things we can control and some things that we can't. To spend too much of our time focusing and worrying about those things we can do nothing about actually just contributes to an awful lot of stress for many people. So the important thing is to zero in on those things you can do something about and that you can exercise some control over. The days can be really long and hard without seeing friends and family like we usually would. I'm just exhausted all the time. It's really full on at the moment. How do parents get a break when they spend all the time with the kids? I'm waking up at night, but then I can't get back to sleep, just worrying about what's going to happen. Will we lose the house? Will any of us get sick? It's been difficult to get any work done without my mum to help babysitting. I feel like I'm shouting all the time. I've got a five-year-old that I'm homeschooling and a fractious three-year-old, and my husband's supposed to be working from home. Uh, and I just can't stop shouting. These parents are really getting a message across that uh, they're worried, they're on edge. People are feeling exhausted and overwhelmed by some of the challenges that they're confronting right now. And I think it's important to be aware that it's, it's actually quite reasonable to be feeling anxious, somewhat distressed, confused and even angry at times in an environment of uncertainty. But the starting point that will really make a difference is to take care of ourselves as a parent. And if you think about this notion of self-care, what it means that if we're able to look after ourselves and do things that promote our own personal well-being, safety and health, we're much better able to attend to the needs of our children and other responsibilities we may have with extended family and workmates and neighbours and the many friends that uh, people may have in their broader social network. So at times like this, sometimes people engage in behaviour that actually increases rather than decreases stress as a way of coping with what's going on. And so it makes sense to actually avoid a lot of these behaviours that uh, make it worse. 
This would include things like the constant checking of screens relating to the latest news that's occurring with respect to COVID-19. What that does is just creates a level of kind of attunement to threat signals and signals that things are not working out that can increase anxiety. Other things such as just simply working far too late. Many people are working much longer hours than they have previously because they're picking up a lot of the work they thought they should have done during the day after the children are finally asleep at night and sometimes working right into one o'clock and two o'clock in the morning but still having to get up in the morning so they're sleep deprived often drinking too much coffee and sometimes doing things like self-medicating on alcohol and other substances this is not a good idea because what it actually does is increase rather than decrease stress so now's the time to really be kind to yourself. It's no one's personal fault about what's happened. These events are totally beyond our personal control. So there's no point in feeling kind of guilty and beating ourselves up in a way that, in a sense, we're taking very deep personal responsibility for how our families are being affected when, in fact, we had no control over it. The world has just drastically changed from what most of us have understood to be normal living in the past. So in a lot of ways, this is a time where a higher degree of flexibility is needed, both in terms of your expectations of yourself, your partner, your children, your extended family network, schools, and so many others in your social world. And so to have realistic expectations of yourself means that you're concentrating on those things that you can actually do something about and not allowing yourself to be taking on all the burdens of the entire universe at this time. I'm worried this is affecting our kids more than they let on. The kids are acting up more than usual. Uh, it's really pushing my buttons. What are the signs of stress in young children? What should I be watching out for? My 15-year-old son doesn't see why he can't stay with his mates and go out with them and he really just doesn't seem to think that it's very serious or anything and I, uh, I just don't know quite how to get through to him because he doesn't talk to us much. I'm worried about the impact on my baby's social development. She hasn't seen another baby in weeks and it could be months. How should you talk to children about what's happening around the world right now? We have a two-and-a-half-year-old grandson whose father is a doctor based in the hospital. How do we explain to him that we can't cuddle him even though we love him dearly because we are concerned that his father may have passed on diseases such as COVID to him and then to us? we really have to have realistic expectations of our children as well. Remember, kids are struggling with the changes in their world. Uh, their routines have been messed up. The way in which they were used to getting up in the morning, getting ready for school or going off to an early childhood facility, the way they contacted with friends have all changed. And children are now watching us and they're watching our reactions to give them clues about uh, whether there's something to be concerned about. Kids are starting to feel anxious about their family, particularly for grandparents, for example, that they're unable to see right now. So it's important to be on the lookout as a parent for any signs of distress of our kids or any changes in behaviour that are taking place. Because the kinds of changes in behaviour that can occur will include children actually being kind of anxious and worried, but also irritable and cranky. They might be engaging in more immature behaviour. They may be wanting to come and sleep in your bed now, but they've been independent, sleeping independently for a long time. But right now, they're feeling apprehensive and anxious. And so we've got to work out whether the changes that our children are experiencing are temporary uh, and the best way of dealing with them is to 
uh, allow kids to be able to talk to us about what they're concerned about and to let them know it's okay to feel whatever it is they're feeling and we need to be able to stay as calm and as comforting as possible. Absolutely, we need to answer their questions that are being posed to us and to be available when they're seeking attention from us and would like to talk to us. But it's important to contrast those moments where kids are wanting to talk to us about worrying things with some fun time, the things we can do as a family, some family games we can play together. And it shouldn't all be just around the use of screens. There are lots of games and things that we can do as a family that will uh, be enjoyable and fun. One of the most important things really right now is for children to get as great a sense of predictability and routine back in their lives as soon as possible. In a lot of ways, we're, we all thrive in an environment of certainty and predictability and children are absolutely the same. So in a snapshot, we are in for a ride right now. We all have to make adjustments to our family routines, to schoolwork, to the different working circumstances we find ourselves in, both at home and outside of home. And of course, some parents, some families in the community have experienced additional concerns relating to loss of work, uh, businesses closing down. There are many challenging situations we're all going through right now. But these are the kind of changes when we're kind to ourselves and we're looking after ourselves and we're making our families a priority that we have the greatest chance of getting through this together. So to recap, tip number one, remember there's no right or wrong way to navigate this time. We're all doing our best. Tip number two, look after your own needs so you can be as calm and consistent as possible. And tip number three, have realistic expectations of yourself and your children too. Thanks for listening to Parenting in a Pandemic. Make sure you like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can find a link to free COVID-19 Parenting in a Pandemic resources in the episode show notes to help you on this journey. 